So not so long ago, we've discussed recent discoveries and actually really exciting discoveries in regards to the mysterious phenomenon known as the dark matter. You can learn more about all of this in one of the videos in the description, but it basically included things like unusual chunks of dark matter pretty much in the middle of nowhere, you can sort of see them visible right here, and even chunks of undeveloped galaxies that were essentially made out of dark matter for the most part, but contained a few stars and a lot of underdeveloped gas. But in that video I also mentioned that there were some discoveries that basically presented us with a few mysteries, and more specifically, a few unresolved problems when it comes to the idea of dark matter as an invisible particle. And so in this video we're actually going to touch on some of these ideas and discuss some of these new observations, including several observations that actually have no explanations even today, and some observations that have been established to be a major problem that potentially have one explanation that is being tested right now. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton, let's discuss dark matter once again, but this time focus on some of the major problems. And specifically various problems that have been established through the collection of data in regards to what's known as the clumpiness of the universe, and in regards to the formation of very large clusters that usually form the largest collections of dark matter in the local universe. And let's start with the first problem. It's actually technically now known as the tension, or a new cosmological tension, the most famous tension being the Hubble tension, or the problem with the expansion of the universe, you can learn more about this in some of the videos in the description, but this new tension is known as S8 tension, or sigma 8 tension. It sort of refers to something nobody expected was even a problem until recently. Here the problem is the overall clumpiness of the entire universe. Or basically how concentrated things are if you were to observe them from a distance. Obviously if something is very clumpy, it's going to appear more web-like, if something is less clumpy, it's just going to be more spread out. And a lot of previous observations, and actually a lot of previous calculations, mostly based on the observations and calculations from the cosmic microwave background, produced an overall value for this clumpiness established to be approximately 0.83. This was calculated and recalculated many many times. And so it was always assumed to be a constant. It's even part of an important formula in various cosmological studies. But by using more recent data, especially from the Dark Energy and Geometry of Space Survey, also known as BOSS, Baryon Oscillation Spectroscopic Survey, recent studies used positions of approximately a million nearby galaxies to recalculate the overall clumpiness near us, and then compare the clumpiness from today to the clumpiness from back then. This was supposed to show us how things changed over time, and the original prediction was always that it's most likely going to change a little bit, but it's probably going to be more clumpy, possibly by just a little bit, because as the time goes by, overall galaxies and a lot of other objects tend to cluster together despite the universe expanding over time. But instead the initial results were the opposite, and that was kind of strange. So additional teams joined in and tried to rediscover what's going on here. And so this time by using 25 million galaxies, with some of them billions of light years away from us, all of the results confirmed once again that the clumpiness today seems to be lower than back in the days. The average was about 0.76, almost 10% lower instead of being higher compared to what we see in the cosmic microwave background. And because the idea of clumpiness is the fundamental property of the standard model of the universe we use today, not understanding why it seems to be so different actually is creating a bit of a problem, or more like a big problem. These initial discoveries make it somewhat unclear why this is so or what's happening here, and actually creates a major challenge for most of the theories involving things like, for example, large particles known as WIMPs that some scientists believe are responsible for dark matter, because previous predictions always suggested that things are going to be more clumpy over time. We see the opposite. But several studies started to propose additional explanations and actually even came up with something that currently makes sense and it doesn't break any theories. This is actually something involving axions. The unusual particles we believe exist that could be responsible for dark matter as well, but were originally proposed as an explanation for the idea of existence of matter over antimatter. These particles might be responsible for the production of more regular matter that you and I are made out of. 
And so by performing analysis on various gravitational lenses, especially the ones coming from distant quasars, and trying to recreate what kind of a dark matter would be responsible for these specific images, some of the scientists started to propose that maybe it's actually axions here and not so much anything else. With additional simulations that produce the universe with or without axions, basically revealing something very, very similar. If the universe does not contain axions and contains heavier particles such as WIMPs representing dark matter, the universe just doesn't look the same and is extremely clumpy, but also very different from what we observe in real life. Yet if you replace everything with axions, which in comparison are believed to be extremely minuscule and very low in mass, actually almost acting like waves instead of particles, the clumpiness drops dramatically, the universe becomes very similar to what it really is, and most importantly, this whole tension thing kind of disappears. And this concept, sometimes referred to as the fuzzy cold dark matter, where basically dark matter is not really a particle and much more of a wave now, has been described in a previous paper in the video in the description. With a lot of these axions potentially having wavelengths even larger than the entire galaxies, and thus influencing formation and distribution of dark matter in very different ways compared to a more massive invisible particle. But these explanations are of course nice and interesting. Is there actually any proof though? Well, at the moment there isn't, but it might be coming soon. So first of all, there are two potential ways of discovering if this is true or not. One of them involves the sun. And here the assumption is that maybe some of these particles might get stuck inside the sun, stay there for a while, and then get annihilated, forming certain particles, including neutrinos, of a very specific high energy. And if we find them coming from the sun at any point, it would confirm the existence of certain types of dark matter. Although at the moment nothing like this has been discovered in the last few years. And so nothing coming from the sun just yet. There is, however, a much more intriguing experiment that actually started not so long ago, ALPS-2, which involves a long, over 100 meter long laser that's going to be directly looking for axion using their fundamental property. That property being the fact that they actually change into photons in presence of very powerful magnetic fields, but only sometimes, actually extremely rarely. So rarely, as a matter of fact, that this experiment is going to be running for years before anything could be discovered. But the way it works is pretty simple. A laser is going to be firing inside a relatively long tube that's lined up with very powerful magnets. Because laser is made out of photons, the idea here is that maybe sometimes some of these photons are going to reconvert back into axions. And because this laser is currently firing at nothing but the wall, if these axions are formed at any point, they're going to pass through this wall and reach the next point of the experiment more magnets. And at that point, one of these axions, if the theory is correct, is going to reconvert back into the same type of light. So basically it's like shining light through a very thick wall. But obviously just a few photons getting through, through the process of conversion into axions and back into light. And the theory here is very solid, so it's just a matter of time now to see if there are going to be any results. And if confirmed, this basically solves a lot of problems in modern physics, including, of course, the problems of matter and antimatter. Although, interestingly enough, just a few years ago, there was a potential detection of these axions coming from very powerful magnetic fields near extremely well-known neutron stars. You can actually learn more about this in the description below. But in that case, it could actually be explained in some other ways. In this experiment, detecting light coming through the wall has absolutely no other explanation. It could only be converted axions, which would then explain the clumpiness of the universe, the unusual observations from various quasars, and prevent us from having a new type of attention. But yeah, there's probably going to be years of research before anything is going to be achieved. But despite this particular idea having some explanations, there's one concept that's still impossible to explain even right now, and it's actually based on recent observations from very large galactic clusters, usually on the collision course. The most famous in this case is El Gordo, the colliding cluster that's sort of visible right here, in this case showing us the interaction of different particles producing X-rays. In reality though, the cluster itself is somewhat difficult to see, but there's definitely a lot of mass here, although that's not really the problem. The problem is the fact that this cluster is really far away from us, so something like 8 billion light years away from planet Earth, 
suggesting that it existed way too early compared to what we expect from galactic development. Normally, scientists assume that galaxies start to grow larger and larger and combine into clusters, which then eventually start colliding, and this process should take billions of years. And this is something that we expect in modern universe, not in a universe when it was approximately half its age. So this collision just seems to have happened way too soon. But there is maybe one potential explanation. Everything here could work if things were actually moving much faster and if the collision was happening much more quickly. So technically El Gordo can be recreated if things are moving way way faster at a very high speed. In this case, the proposed velocity was approximately 2300 km per second, much faster than expected from galaxies at this point in time or from galactic clusters in general. And though it is possible, it's just extremely unlikely, creating a problem for ideas of dark matter because it shouldn't allow things to move that fast that early on. And though at the moment it's kind of difficult to explain it for this cluster, a very similar issue exists in a much closer and a more well-known cluster we usually refer to as the bullet cluster. Here the problem is very similar. Things are moving too fast and colliding a little bit too early on compared to a lot of other galaxies. And so exactly what's happening here, that's not something we're going to know until someone figures it out. At the moment there's really no model, no explanation, nothing we have right now that seems to make sense. And because these observations were also confirmed recently with the James Webb Space Telescope, it more or less confirms that there is a mystery to be solved and nobody knows how to approach it just yet. And so at the moment these are some of the biggest questions when it comes to dark matter and how the scientists are trying to tackle them. We'll definitely talk about more of them in some of the future videos, but at least for now that's all I wanted to mention. You can also find additional videos on a similar topic in the description below and don't forget to check out the previous video that talks about some of the more exciting discoveries in regards to dark matter. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.